Mama. Mama. Mom. 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 Being a mom is a full-time job. Some days you wonder if you're even going to keep it together. But you're not alone. Because we've got your back. We're single moms talking about parenting, divorce, dating, and everything else in between. I'm Julie. And I'm Jasenia. This, this is Splitting, Splitting Upward. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. We have the most unbelievable episode planned for you today on Splitting Upward. Unbelievable. Like, get out your pen and paper and get no ready joke. to take notes. No joke. I'm Julie. I'm Jasenia. We are your co-hosts on this journey of single motherhood. Yeah. It almost <laughs> felt like the opening of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> and we're ready to so blow your mind. We're going to be talking to Carmelia Ray, yeah. who is a matchmaker, dating coach. We have so many questions. Oh my gosh, do we have so many questions? So many. And it's so interesting because getting out, back out there, like after, after you've been in a relationship or yeah. in a marriage, uh, it's not easy and we know no, it's not it's easy. Not. And it's so interesting because I've 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 so I've been separated slash divorced for a very, very long time. How long? How long has it been? Twelve years. Okay, but for me, it's been eight years that okay. I've been divorced. Right. Oh, so di- right. So my divorce. So I've been single yeah. for twelve years. Okay. But my divorce didn't happen until six years ago. So for six years, and it was not because we were fighting. It's not because it's just because we were lazy and we got along and we kind of didn't give a shit. So right, right. So it was just like whatever. Uh, but so for six years, I was technically still married. Right. And I was very upfront about it. And there were definitely dudes who were like. I don't want to even get near that because you are a married woman and I'm not doing that. I'm like, do you not understand? My husband does not live with me anymore. At this point, at some point, he'd had a girlfriend already. Like, it, but there is nothing there. But some people can't handle it. Well, okay. So I say I'm divorced eight years, but technically it's not eight years. It's maybe like six years. So there was like a two-year interim in there you know where we were like who's gonna pay for the divorce you're gonna pay for the divorce no I'll pay for the <laughs> divorce no you're gonna pay for it you know it's like a whole thing but I did date because in my mind I'm divorced you're single I'm no longer with this person at all and same thing for him he started his relationship like like two weeks to a maybe, maybe not two weeks but a couple of weeks maybe a Fast. month mad fast (laughs) (laughs) he started it which was like I was like wow dude but okay you know get your life on (laughs) well I said like I don't I don't have a problem if someone is upfront with me and honest and says hey you know we've actually been separated for three years we're finishing up the paperwork it's gonna be soon okay cool but I here's a story right this happened to me I went out on a date with a guy we've been chatting and he's up telling me he's single Mm -hmm. you know they, 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 that maybe he, I don't think he said he was separated. I think he said specifically that he was single. Okay. And so, so I was like, at this point, all right, let's meet. We'll have lunch. Yeah. And in the process of lunch and asking questions, because you know your instinct, you know, listen, when you feel it, go with it. Because you know yeah. generally, it's true. They say your gut is your second brain. Absolutely. You have to listen to it. So I'm asking questions and I'm thinking, something, something not right here. And I'm like, so, so tell me more about the process of, of, of your divorce. Mm-hmm. And that's when the eyes kind of went. That's like, good, though. That, 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 yeah. that was a good question because it's you. very specific, specific right on the nose. And so he said, well, we're, we're not actually divorced yet. So, again, I don't care if yeah. you're separated in the process of getting divorced. So I was like, oh, oh, I, I thought you were. So where are you in the process? Right. And he's like, well, we're in separate bedrooms. And then I was like, hold up. You still in the same house? Oh no! And he's like, yeah, but we don't we don't sleep together. We don't whatever. No. And I was like, oh no, we're done. Yep, right. We're done. So that's Denzos. so that's my that's my line. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's one thing you're separated. You don't live together. You actually have separate households. Yes. Okay, we could try. But yeah. if you are still living together, and I know it's not easy for a lot of people financially, people do have to stay together in the same household before they can split. But they I'm can sorry, figure it out. That's not a place then I want to be. Right. You don't date do while not that's be dating. happening because it's going to make the person uncomfortable. Now, for me, um, I, I was separated, I guess, if you want to call it that. But in my mind, I was divorced for about a year. And then I ended up in a relationship, like a long long relation it wasn't that long it was maybe like a year (laughs) after longer than mine (laughs) (laughs) but um it was 
somewhat of an issue for him that we were not divorced yet. And I kept telling him, listen, I cannot afford it. And so I'm saving up for this and all that, you know. And ultimately, the relationship did end because he felt like I was still in love with my ex-husband. Has he not heard you talk about your ex-husband? Literally. Like, (laughs) what, are you crazy or something? You crazy, man. Like, come on. You're not paying attention to anything that I'm saying. That, But um, I think a lot of that came from the fact that we were still technically married. Right. And co-parenting, because your son was younger then, so you right. needed to have more we still, to do with yeah, each other. Yeah, we needed to have more interaction at that time. It wasn't very good, but whatever. Uh, yeah, and so it was a problem for him. So for some people, it is a problem. And I didn't know it was that serious of a problem from, for him until like he was like, listen, I, I, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I think you're still in love with your ex-husband type of situation. Yeah, that was him being insecure. Oh, my gosh. So insecure. So many men are so insecure. Stupid. It makes you, you stupid, dude. I'm going to look at the camera right now. You stupid. Anyway. <laughs> it, it, but it, you know what? But Because uh, we go out, we do meet these men, and it, it sometimes it makes me question, what did your mother do to you? Well, a relationship, uh, I feel like a, a man's relationship with his mother is a huge, huge... <sighs> Almost like a, it's it's just one of those things that you really, really, really have to pay attention to. You know, it's the red flag or the green flag. OK, so explain that. So so what would be the red flag kind of relationship that a man would have with his mother that would make you go, oh, uh, uh-uh. well, I feel like a relationship, a, a, a man's relationship with his mom is if he has a mom or whoever his mother figure is, um, is just it's telling on how his relationship will be with you, ultimately, on whether he respects his mom, on whether they um, get along, on whether they communicate with each other. These are all things that I did not see with my ex-husband. <laughs> they did not have a very good communicative relationship. Right. You know, they loved each other and they're always there for each other, but they didn't really communicate. They annoyed each other. You know what I mean? Um, so and ultimately that did lead into our marriage. It was it was that constant of like, dude, why can't you just talk to me? You know, it's not about what's on TV, but like what's right. actually happening right now in this in this apartment. Um, so I feel like if a man does not have a good relationship with his mom, then most likely, mama, he's not going to have a good relationship with you in the beginning. It's beautiful. Right, but there's also the kinds of relationships that 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 men have with their mothers, where yeah. uh, the mom shows up and cleans the apartment while they're at work, dropping off dinner two, three nights a week, yes. still folding your laundry. Yeah, she's like his maid. She's like his maid. That's not okay either. Yeah, he's got to get needy used to it. man. Right, that's a man that's going to need you to be doing all that stuff for him because he can't too. do it for himself. And you're going to be competing with his mother. Yes, so it's important when you're raising your sons. Make sure they clean their own rooms. You know, teach them how to cook. Teach them to wash the dishes when, you know, you haven't come home yet. You know, it's a late night for you and there's a sink full of dishes. They have, I mean, I understand it's really hard to get kids to do anything. Yeah, I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking like, ooh, I suck. Yeah. My kids don't do but enough. But it's, it's just a constant reminder. And it, that communication, you ha- it has to be, it has to be a parent. It has to be something at the forefront of your relationship with your kid. Communication with your son specifically. Now, mommies, I mean, daughters and fathers, same thing, I believe. Same exact thing. They always talk about, oh, the girl, you know, oh, she got daddy issues. She got right, daddy right, issues. Right. But honey, you got mommy issues. Right. You got mommy issues. Mm. So It's true, though. I mean, so for me, right, so I didn't, my dad wasn't around. Right. I mean, my dad passed away when I was very young anyway, but he Mm -hmm. also then in in the growing up wasn't around that much. So it's interesting. I I admit it. I I do have daddy issues. Yeah. So there is there there's something I mean, look, it's not that I want somebody to be like taking care of me, but I want to feel safe. Yeah. With someone. It's because you didn't have that growing up. You didn't have that. And so you're looking for that. And so it's it, not an issue. It's not an it's issue, not, honey. It's a you, good love. thing that you're looking for that. I'm working on it. No, really. But I, it, when I meet a man who's yeah. got a daughter, yes, oh. I also judge 
what his relationship with his kid is. Yes. Right? Because then I know, like, if he has a beautiful, loving, wonderful, affectionate relationship with his daughter, then, oh, okay, that's a man that I know is going to be able to protect me, be safe, you know, make me feel safe, take care of me in that way. Yes. So as much as I think a a man's relationship with his mother is very telling, uh, and we should not discount the relationships with fathers. um, Right. But I also think the relationship that men have with their children is extremely telling. I I feel like a, a man's relationship with his daughter is telling of how the relationship was with his mom that's true too you know what i mean how he saw his mom communicate with him and therefore he's not afraid to communicate with his daughter whether she's you know a boy or a girl you know what i mean right that that relationship right there is is oh my god whenever i see a man who's like loving to his little girl or something it's oh my god i I love you marry Uh, me yeah (laughs) oh oh, wait you already are married Are you, are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> we have a wonderful guest joining us. You could see us. You could see her right here, right here. And look at how gorgeous she is. This is our dating episode. And so to, to make that happen, we went to the source, the expert. Yes. Carmelia Ray, who is a matchmaker, online dating expert, dating coach extraordinaire. And we like we almost don't want to even get your listener questions because Jasani and I have so many <laughs> we have between so many. us. Yeah. But we'll get to some of them. But first, we're going to be talking to Carmelia to learn a little bit more about her. Carmelia, how did you end up getting into matchmaking? Tell us about that. Wow. Well, that story starts in 1992, ladies. Wow. Uh, 27 years ago, before Match.com, before social media even existed, um, I applied for an ad at a call center to work for a dating company or a dating service, a matchmaking service. And my job was to call people on the phone back then in dial up (laughs) when you would like sit in a room and you literally picked up the phone and made outbound calls. And my job was to um, share information about matchmaking. And I booked appointments for people to come in and meet with a matchmaker. So I spent a big part of my career in the industry having continual conversation with singles about what they're dealing with, what they're looking for in a partner, why they're single and giving them the option of, you know, exploring matchmaking because there wasn't much else then. Like it's changed a lot. Now, what has changed about it? Like running a whole matchmaking service nowadays. (laughs) Well, um, you know, what changed a lot before is what traditional was before was meeting at bars, at friends, you know, at a club, Mm -hmm. through work. Uh, What's traditional now is meeting online, you know, meeting on a DM. Right. Uh, You're not actually meeting. uh, You're not, you're not actually. Right. Yeah. No, you're not actually meeting a Twitter. So that's what's changed. And I think for matchmakers, too. Um, some matchmakers would consider these social media platforms or dating sites and dating apps like competition. Whereas me, I really see it as um, a plus for somebody who does not want that confusion and really just wants to be introduced or even better as a coach, someone who knows that that can work but needs to figure out like how to navigate it so that it works for them. So I love the fact that there's a lot of noise in the industry because it means people need help. Do you have favorite online sites that you encourage your clients to use? Yeah, like Tinder or Bumble or like what? Uh, You know what? It's not about it's not about favorite. I think there are always different sites that will work work for the for different people like uh, a very familiar site that everybody knows is match.com you ladies know match.com right and and it's a paid site so because it's so well known um you know that's a site that some people might uh like to start with and then of course you've heard of tinder uh, like who has not heard of tinder for some people they love the fact that when they're visually um motivated that they can easily swipe for people that's okay so for some people they love tinder and of course bumble is where women can lead and that's always cool so it doesn't really matter what site you're on but you need to be on the right site for your situation i mean i created a site also called sensio it's a matchmaking app and then there's um wait, wait, wait. To the- what is it yeah, please spell it please spell <laughs> we're it we're gonna download now yeah yeah yeah, you can. It's 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 ma- it's launched in Los Angeles. I'll send you ladies the link. Okay. It's a matchmaking app. And then here in Toronto, 
there's so many different startups. There's a, there's an app called Will You App where you can actually post dates and go out with somebody based on the date that you like and then there's a company called paired where you know you can see people's social media profile like instagram like there are literally hundreds of um, like so hundreds many. of dating apps. so it's there's something for everyone really so i know you know you were single at one point you are married now did you meet your current spouse on a dating app with, through a matchmaker how'd that happen no, I met my see. I met my spouse the traditional way, like IRL. Oh, I miss those days. We kind of, I know, right? Like we met in real life. I was on a golf course, um, and we met that way. So that's how we met. And uh, you know, a lot of my peers and um, singles that I'm working with, they, it's, you're not hearing a lot of people like, oh, I just randomly walked into a guy or I approached him, you know, squeezing the bananas. You don't hear that. <laughs> Hasn't happened to me since I was 19 years old. Went to the Puerto Rican well, Day Parade, picked up my ex-husband. Oh, hey, no. Well, that there was you your go. first mistake. Well, <laughs> time in the Whole Foods, ladies. Like, come on now. <laughs> Seriously, and don't squeeze the bananas ever. <laughs> Here, here's here's my problem. <laughs> no, no, it's not my problem. But here, here's what I have been finding um, or seeing rather experiencing men are so shy and afraid to approach women more than more now than they have ever been like th th do you find that men are just like more shy these days or like what is it what's wrong with them um you know what ladies it it, it is both ways now okay it's we we as ladies cannot leave the responsibility of men approaching us that if you ladies yes. are in that listening and belief i'm sorry but no one's gonna approach you but because men are afraid why yeah they don't want rejection as much as i mean a man is dying for you to approach him are you kidding me they yeah. love that yeah. and the other thing is that because of the me too movement right and they don't want this embarrassment of course it can be very intimidating yeah for people so i'm sorry i'm not gonna leave my fate to like drop a handkerchief and <laughs> Gotta pick it up because he can be like, you know what? Was that handkerchief for me? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was for that guy. I have no <laughs> idea. Like, maybe she'll sue me if I pick up that handkerchief. So we're in a very, very different environment today. It's so true because I was yeah. actually talking to a guy friend of mine and I was like, well, why don't you just go up to someone? He's like, no way. It's too rapey. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. But, so but it's like, like All wait right, a but, minute. But you're, if you're like in a bar and it's a bunch of people around and you're all single, you see. And you don't go in friends. squeezing the bananas. You know, I think regardless of gender, yeah, people need to uh, feel more confident in their approach to anyone. Right. You just need to have more confidence in your approach to anyone and not and overcome that fear of rejection because you will not know what you don't know. And people regret most of the things they do not do. It, you get rejected. You'll get used to it. It's kind of like applying for a job like yeah. you literally got to do it in a tactful way way respecting personal space because you do not want to be within that you know creepy vibe syndrome right and you've got to really be good at connecting the dots like look at body language so much of what we say is nonverbal. the cues is she listening is she pulling away are her hands like this like you you make that eye contact is she like looking at her phone and like not paying attention yeah. there's some obvious clues here that no that that's a real one right there that's a real one so you you have you have four children yeah i had three children oh you um, oh you have three three yes uh so 20 by the end of the year they will be 21 15 and three. Oh, amazing oh my goodness so I, I've got children in all different phases of education <laughs> and different stages of life. So toddler, high school and adult. Oh, my gosh. Now. OK, so for like, OK, I guess the, the high schooler and the adult, do you give them dating advice? And <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Uh, can I be honest? I yes. think the adult gives me dating advice now, too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, of course. I mean, my son has not um, he come expressed to an interest in girls. Like, okay. I don't know if that's just a teenage boy thing, but we're not talking about relationships at all. Like, we can talk about the latest video game, but right. he's not interested in girls at the moment, being 15. At least, 
he hasn't expressed that to me. Um, my older daughter, uh, she had a serious boyfriend from 17, had a serious breakup. So, you know, that high school prom thing and went over that phase. But so, yeah, we have regular open communication about dating. Yeah. And my toddler, well, we're not going to have that conversation. <laughs> no, because mommy's first always when yes, they're that yes. age. So your yes. your website is carmeliaray.com, C-A-R-M-E-L-I-A, ray.com. So I saw, you know, because obviously we had to go check it out. So yeah. you have, yeah. there's an aspect of, of the website where you can join the database. Can you tell me what yes. that's like? Yes. Um, so when you work with a matchmaker, most matchmakers collect um, uh, build a singles network because that's what you're going to need to use when you're looking for clients. So many people, even in your own city, now I'm an international matchmaker. So anybody anywhere in the world can join the database for free. Doing it right and, now. And, and so yeah. and got, you two ladies, I better see your faces in the next week. You better be in there in that database. When I collaborate with matchmakers, we actually have a community. I work with a community of matchmakers. So let's say somebody in New York says, you know what, I'm recruiting for this very eligible bachelor. He wants, you know, all of these criteria. Who do you have? We can now reference our resource of singles and make that recommendation. So being very clear, anyone who's in the database is kind of like sitting on the bench. They're not necessarily playing the game. Right. But you know what? At least if you're sitting in the bench, like you can get picked. Right? Yes. Not even in the bench, then you don't even get noticed. So that's one one of the things that a single can do, no matter what city they're in. Go to the look up matchmaker who's in the city. Most of them allow you to join their database for free, or maybe there's a nominal fee. Like for a small for a small fee, I can meet with someone or Skype someone and verify that they are real, so that at least that puts them even above the the bench warm. Right, because right? there are so many scammers and fake profiles out there that it right. makes it very complicated. Now I have right. a question. Okay, yeah. what are your suggestions for like top questions that you can ask someone before meeting in person? Great question. Yeah, I mean, number one, I think the most important question, which a lot of people fear to ask, is what are this? What is this person's relationship goals? Yes. Like, if you're if you're gonna waste your time or invest time in meeting someone, like you got to make sure you are aligned with uh, what you want right now. Is it a hookup? Is it just friends? Is it you're passing time? Are you going through a separation? I mean, people who go on dating sites are at different um, uh, stages in their dating life from breakup to, Mm -hmm. to like getting over someone to completely ready to wanting to have babies. I mean, that's a very different thing. So relationship goals. I think the other thing that's important I, I don't have a generic, like, you need to ask these questions. Okay. I always ask my clients to say, what are the three things that really matter to you? Like, what do you want to know about somebody yeah. up front? Those are the things you've got to ask. So if it is, are you a dad? Do you, like, what's the arrangements with your kids? What's your relationship like with your ex-partner? Like, these are kinds of the things that, you know, make or break the deal breakers. Are you a smoker, a non-smoker? Do you travel? What if you're afraid of traveling or you're deathly allergic to cats? Do you own a cat? Like you've got to have, you've got to know exactly like what's the qualifier to move to in person right? and what's the qualifier in person to move to date number two. Like every stage of the relationship, you need to have these qualifiers. Well, and that's something actually just Annie and I were talking about too. How many dates do you give someone before you figure out your, because sometimes I know within the first 10 minutes, yeah, we're done. Oh my God, five seconds, <laughs> literally. Like as soon but as there, I see him, it's like, nope. But there is, there, there is, you know, Aziz Ansari wrote a book, Modern Love. And, and so in that, he talked about his dating experiences. And he was like, I've pledged that I'm going to go out on, I think it was six dates before I have decided that I am done with this person. Because you don't know, really. But I, I that's think a you know, huge though. investment. And that's, I think I know. Yeah. So when you tell your clients, Carmelia, what do you tell them in terms of how many times should you go out with somebody before you write them off? You know, it really, again, it, it all depends on the quality of the interaction when you're with that person. For as you, Jasenia said, I know in 10 seconds. Now, yeah. now I'm going to say as a coach, 
No, you don't. <laughs> well, maybe you. Do. You know how I know. You know how I know well, what they look like, what they smell like. Oh. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. What you do know, yes, you can know the physicality of that person. But yeah. I gotta say, there are many times when people have ended up in long-term relationships when on the instant attraction was not there, but they opened True. their mouth, they gave them the chance, and it was like, oh, <laughs> I judged that too quickly. Just said so, it's like, yes, yeah, not happening. <laughs> I don't know. It's like I don't know. It's very important to me to be attracted to you, like at- at A hundred percent, and and attraction is not just, again, for some people, attraction is a combination of the whole thing and not just the face or body or whatever. No, not just the face and body. It's also other things, like how smart they are. Like the body and the face. You know? (laughs) (laughs) How good they are (laughs) with their mom. What what kind of gel they use now. How the head looks like on the body, right? right? (laughs) Right. No, but I have found, too, in in my experience, when I've gone out on dates, and if I, like, within the first, let's say, 20 minutes, am picturing what we're going to be doing later, it's actually not a good sign. (laughs) Because it means there's a there's an explosion of chemistry there. Yeah. By lust part, you mean um, like it's too like you're too driven you by that. Well, sex. no, it's that it's that it, it, it I might have total chemistry with this person, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good person for me. Right. So yeah. it's hitting hitting the buttons. No. But yeah. those buttons, unfortunately, have been programmed badly. So I need to reprogram them. Yeah. So that I can give myself the space to actually be available to someone who is going to treat me the way I want to be treated, deserve to be treated, need to be treated. So yes. I recognize, so sometimes when that buzz is like, oh, oh, oh well, you I have to know what you to, want. You know, you have to know yeah. what you want. If, if you don't know what you want, if you don't know what's good for you, then. You know, I caution people to have rigid rules on like, okay, I'm going to give them six dates and then I'm right. going to know, or I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Like dating is, is fluid. Yeah. You, you can't control people, you know, and in some cases you feel this instant connection and it also depends on their communication style. Sometimes you can be in perfect sync with someone and they're just answering all the questions and other times people have all their history and they're a little reserved and they've got their own tests that you've got to measure before they open up Pandora's box yes. and let in like, and then you, re- and pe- a lot of people prematurely make those judgments or even people who are struggling with trying to be vulnerable. And they're just like, Oh, uh, I want to share, but like, I don't want to share. That's where you've got to really be intuitive and as well. No, does this person have the, the qualities that you're looking for, what makes you want to dig a little bit further? Date smarter, not harder. So you've got to know all of those things. I like that. And yeah, so we, we were, I love that. when we were talking as we were getting ready for the show today, you know, so you have a show called Mom versus Matchmaker. Yeah, which I mean, just the premise alone is hilarious. But but so like so I my my only story, the only story that I have is my mom has tried to set me up once and she was continually telling this guy how great I was. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You should meet my daughter. My daughter's so fabulous. And he finally said, listen, I'm sure she's great. But I don't think my husband would appreciate it. Oh, no. (laughs) Only man she tried to set me up with was gay. And he's a lovely man. He's a good friend now. Oh, but oh. but so my mom would not do well on this show. But tell us how does it how does it work competing with moms? She's the perfect person to be on the show because then I win. Yay! Let's get mom on the show. Oh boy. <laughs> tell us about the experience, you know, working with moms. I'm sure competing with moms is kinda tricky. Is it like an even ratio of who wins if this mom You know, the show would not be a competition if it was just a slam dunk. No one would watch that, right? right. Like I have to say, uh, they the, it's very good casting. I mean, these are real moms and real kids. Mm. Uh, and obviously they choose parents that have a very close bond with their child. So they know the child. Um, so a mom is a fierce competitor, but they're not matchmakers, right? Right. And here's the thing about children. And even with my own kids, there's a version of my children that I know. And there's a version of my children I do not know. Yes. So for me to pretend that I know my kids because when they leave the house or they're on the phone or they're doing whatever they're doing on their phone, right. it, they're not the same person with me consistently, right? So so that, that was the edge that I had is that kids could tell me secrets or things they didn't know that tell their mom. Like a child would say, I like girls with a big butt, like I like, or whatever <laughs> it is, right? And, um, and this one mom was like, 
oh, and she was a single mom too, which was interesting. But she's like, oh, if I think the guy's hot, then she thinks the guy's hot. So I know what she's looking for. And I'm like, all right. So in those advantages, I've never met the boyfriends or past girlfriends before. So they could have an advantage on looks, but I match based on total compatibility, the intake. So I'm going for what the single tells me. Yeah. And mom's going for who they know that they've liked before. Right. So we're really testing the who knows best in this case. And it's it's quite evenly matched, very evenly matched. So if someone comes into you and says, oh, I want to I want a man with, uh, you know, a big schlong and, <laughs> you know, a hairy chest. And uh, I want him to be six, a two. And I want him to have blue eyes and dark hair and all this. Does that like, is that like a red flag for you? Like, okay, hold on. What, what's going on here? You know? Yeah. I mean, I think there, the red flags come when people have this very finite, exclusive, specific, tight knit description. I don't create people out of clay. <laughs> right. I am not God. So, I mean, you've got to be a, a little bit flexible or for example, this kills all uh, me all the time, but you'll have um, a, could be a classic example, um, a woman who's five, two, and she wants to date six, two and above. That's it. Nobody in between. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm five, four, uh, so, but same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, or, um, or somebody who is, um, averagely fit. And their idea of a great, of a person for them is like a marathon runner, yeah. Olympic style body type. Right. And and that's where I start to think, you know, let's let's really assess those things and see how realistic that is. Yeah. So now do you yeah. find because I, I sometimes I see it in the street I, when I see couples, I love looking at couples. Same. OK, um, usually the most lovey dovey couples or the couples that seem like they're really like getting along like they're actually having conversations and you know they're not just like on their phone sitting next to each other they look alike they look alike they look like brothers and sisters or sister and sister or whatever it is do you find that like maybe that's like a thing maybe you should look for somebody who looks like you and if you don't like what you look like maybe you should fix it (laughs) you know listen we are at the end of the day we're animals right and likes attract like. And certainly when you think about a partner, you also think of what you're like, for some people, the consideration, what are our kids gonna look like? Right. You know, so there's that offspring consideration. Like some uh, some women and men I know specifically look for somebody because they wanna know what their future children are gonna look like. So that's totally intentional. Mm. Um, so 40% of attraction is in built in in our genetics. So it's programmed in our DNA. So we tend to gravitate towards people that are similar, similar in culture, similar in look. So that's that, that fit. That's why, you know, when yeah. uh, Mattel creates a Ken and they create a Barbie, don't they look like friggin' Ken and Barbie yep. brother and sister, yep. but atomically perfect and yeah. completely symmetrical? Mm-hmm. That's just showing you that as creatures, we are creatures of habit and we will gravitate to something comfortable. Right. And why our own face that we look in the mirror is comfortable. And opposites don't so, really attract. Not always. Not always. Not always. Not always. We're, and there's there's always exceptions to the rule, right? Because, right, yeah. come on, how many times do you see couples where you're like, what? Yeah, how did that happen? Mem- <laughs> we didn't get the memo on that couple. Like, <laughs> yeah. We know you guys have questions. So we're going to we're gonna take a break from talking just about us and let you guys. Yeah, we're going to focus on you. <laughs> we're going to give you guys an opportunity to, to hear from Carmelia and your burning questions and her amazing yes. answers on Splitting Upward. So our first question is from Diana from California. She's from Cali. So you could use uh, Carmelia's app, Senseo. Could look it up and find it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So she's... She says, she's a, I'm a single mom in my early 30s, newly dating, newly dating again, and haven't been feeling great chemistry with any men I've seen so far. Honey, I feel you. I'm not sure if it's just me and that I need more time to warm up to someone new. How many dates bef- should I give before I give up? Well, we actually talked about that earlier in the episode, yeah. and, and I think we're all in agreement that it shouldn't be a prescribed number of right. dates. Yeah. If no. you're not feeling it, get out. But if you but feel if you like there's maybe. something, yeah. You, some they got a little chutzpah. They got a little <laughs> something. Then mm, maybe you want to taste the marinade. You know, right, Carmelia? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it sounds like when somebody's feeling like uh, they're not uh, connecting with those people uh, in person, I have to also wonder what's missing here is what are the avenues, right? Is she? I'm going to assume that she's on dating sites. Right. Sometimes right. what I would say is shift that a little bit. There are multiple sites. There are different ways that you can meet people. And also she should get in the habit of, of going to more live events and places where she can physically meet people because it sounds like there's a disconnect between you know, meeting them in person and there being a disappointment or lack of chemistry versus when you meet somebody in real life or in person and there is a natural connection, she may be the kind of person that needs to step outside more and stop relying on digital media and getting disappointed when in person it, it's flat. So, so get herself out more, pay attention more when you're out. I think a lot of people who are on their phones miss opportunities to connect with people um, in oh, real life. Yes, right. And it's the like, difference between like looking be, down be and looking up. People, people watcher, right? Yeah. Like get, be, get a, be a professional people watcher. And the other thing is um, if she's got friends and she's got a type, it sounds like she's got this type, maybe she can communicate that with her friends and people she knows ask for help in that area and don't rely on just one source uh, it also makes me wonder whether or not she's actually feeling like she can have chemistry with someone if there's some internal stuff going on with her do you feel sexy when you're going out do you feel like you are desirable so right. make sure check in with yourself and make sure you're feeling good about yourself before you get out there because maybe you're not bringing the chemistry Maybe and, it's there, but you're not also, feeling it. I feel also like the right person will bring it out of you. You know what I mean? That comfort. that Like you do with me? <laughs> yes, boo. <bull>. Hello. <laughs> I, mean, I, I totally agree with that because you get what you give. And if yeah. already there is that underlying like, oh, I bet this is going to be another dud. Or, oh, I bet you I'm not going to have anything in common with this person. It, it sometimes, it, it, not sometimes, it's time. actually a law of attraction. It actually happens. I do right? it all the time. Here we go. We're changing your we're changing your dating. Tape. I have been dating for so long. This is not a listener question though. But <laughs> okay. I have been dating for so long. We have so a question long. from Jesenia in New York. <laughs> yeah. From Bronx, New York. <laughs> the Bronx. Um yeah, no, that's real. So I'm glad that you said that because I was talking with my best Oop, hello. I was talking with my best friend earlier and she was like, "Well, maybe you shouldn't think like that." And I'm mm-hmm. like, "Shut up." You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, you know. And you gave good dating advice anyway. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, you're single too. Um, no, but uh, that that is a real thing. And when she said it, I thought, hmm, I guess, you know. Um, but it's true. I think you get kind of burnt out, though, when you are constantly dating and you don't really find that that magic thing that, you know, you want to find or not even like an interesting factor. Yeah, and I think on that point, um, so many people just have this hyped like expectation and do expect that rockets are going to fly and it's it's got to be this magical moment and you kind of almost set yourself up for disappointment when this person is like a normal dude, right? Yes. And it's like, "Oh my god, my I didn't instantly want to jump in the sack with him. Like he's boring." So there there's also uh, the perspective and the expectation. Most of disappointment comes from this like really a uh, perfect view of how things should go. And when it doesn't go exactly as planned, you get turned off. And that can also be detrimental to your dating success. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, another, Next question. Yeah. Another listener, uh, uh, another listener question, not a Jasenia question, a listener question. Uh, Lauren from New Jersey. Jersey. She's our neighbor. Uh, over the past few months, I keep seeing this hot guy shopping at the same grocery store I go to. Squeezing bananas. I don't see a ring on his finger, but he's always with a kid who I assume is his son. Should I feel weird approaching him in front of his son? Mm. What do you think Mm. about that? You should feel weird, but still do it. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 I'm kidding. I don't know. You're the expert. What, what, What should she do? Just you talk. know, sometimes kids are a great way to break the ice with a parent. Now, I do not know if this mom is, um, if this person is a single mom. So she there's always know. that relatedness. Right. But if you see, if you strike a conversation with the child, it actually um, creates an opening 
for him to join that conversation. So yes. if it was a little boy and I wanted to get in that action and the boy was interested in something, I'd be like, I would go up to him and say, so which cereal do you like? Like, what's the what's your favorite cereal? I need to buy something for, you know, my child. Or what are these kids? I have to buy a present for my daughter's uh, child or whatever the case is. Like, what yeah. are kids your age into these days? Oh, really? What about daddy? What does daddy think? You know, like, I would, like, write into posing that question to, to dad um, and do it in not a creepy way, clearly, right? Yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> when you treat a child... And, and that parent can see that you're interacting. I have to tell you, with my little one, I cannot tell you how much you think uh, to, uh, animals are like a, a conversation opener. <laughs> Your children, especially if they're cute and talkative and playful, like, my God, I'm like, hey, girl, make a scene over there. Come on, I need to, t I need to talk to that person. <laughs> So, you know, getting in with the child and having a conversation about how's your day, blah, 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 will open that up for, for dad. Oh, my gosh. I love that. I love that. No, it's I great. Mean, and there's a way to... a normal conversation with somebody is just... Right. I mean... But there's a way know. to sneak it should, in that there. That should be a class. Do you guys right. have that just class? Teach them how to have conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> teach well, people to have conversation. You can even go to the dad and go, oh, by the way, I'm I'm supposed to get some uh, nut-free products for um, a, a child who's deathly allergic of nuts. Like, do you know where I can get that? Like, like, right. like, be the curious. First of all, women always need to play uh, the role to the guy to let him help. So if you go to him and just say, you know, I um, do you know where I can get this or what aisle? Have you shopped here before? Because I, I don't know where like the fruit aisle is and it's standing right. But oh, you mean like right here? <laughs> <laughs> it be kind of cute about it too, He's like, right? Miss, so I see you here every day. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna let you go but we got one more question only because Jasenia and I were taking up so much time so so <laughs> and and then we're gonna go offline but but so we have one more question for you and then we'll 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 attempt to release you this question is uh from Jane from New York City she says my kids don't have a good relationship with their dad I'm not sure what to tell dates when they ask me about that relationship Hmm. They don't have, you know, here's one thing that you always, you want to always move forward and yes. spin things in a positive. Mm -hmm. You know, my children are working on a better relationship with their father. Like you're working That's on it. Uh, th Even that if it's that not is true. a positive way to, to, <laughs> to spin it, right? Like, um, you know, it's don't have to say it's strained. It's not working. You know, we're, we're working on a better relationship with their dad. That's it. Yeah. Keep it simple. You don't need to get into the gist of it. You said it's something you're working on. And that means it's not going to be this way forever. If you start to say, oh, it's always this way and he's this way and that way. It's Forget like, it. oh, my God, too much drama. But just say you're working on it. Right. Good. Right. Perfect. Carmelia Ray, oh Carmelia Ray com, internationally acclaimed matchmaker, dating coach. You offer a lot of different services and, and fairly reasonable uh, as well. But the fact that we can get into your database for free. Is kind of really That's fantastic. That's and gonna I'm change so my excited. life. Um, and I, I, you know what? We're gonna probably have to have you back because we didn't even really get into in what which I. I would love to come back yeah, and uh, because we, we can oh, do please. something off air because I think you girls want to book me for off air, right? Yeah, probably one hundred thousand uh, million percent <laughs> you know because we didn't get into like profiles and what profiles should look like and that's no. definitely yes yeah. so we're gonna have to do like the continued kind of episode. pictures absolutely yeah yeah but thank you so much carmelia if you want to know more carmelia ray.com and you can also watch mom versus the matchmaker on mix tv myx tv and and, and thank out, you out tv in canada and what what is it out tv o u t tv dot com in canada mom right. versus matchmaker carmelia ray thank you so much yes thank you i know you're you, gonna ladies. help us you already have helped us <laughs> Uh, we this has so been another having... amazing episode. Oh my gosh! We just so we just great. need to do dating episodes all the time. Like literally, I can do that every single day because it's <laughs> my we life. Didn't, we didn't even scratch. But the then surface. when I get a man, forget it. That's it. It's, it's going to be over. I'm no. going to be like, well, this is what you need to do. <laughs> this is what you, you need. The expert. Yeah, I'm going to be the. <laughs> you ever notice that people do that? Like once they get into a relationship, right, once. Yeah, once they get into a relationship, it's like, oh, no, oh, so now she never had any problems mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always, always. But well, okay. 
this that's the show for today, guys. <laughs> it was so fun. I, I know. I, we're we're going to absolutely connect with Carmelia offline, maybe. Yeah. And we'll let you know, right? Because we'll let you know how it goes. Because I, I think, because I'm going to get in the database. And yeah, you hopefully sure. you will do the I same will, thing. I will and too. then we'll certainly, let, we'll let you guys know. We'll fill you in. And, and look, that's why we're here, right? Pigs. We are reminding you <laughs> that in your journey of single motherhood, you are not alone. Jasenia no. and I are in it with you. And so we're going to be here every week to answer your questions, to give you, you know, some of our experiences yes. and talk about some of the crazy shit we all get into. Because yes. uh, it's fun. It, it's, and because we love you. You know, and it's real. It it's is, real. It is for real. It's real. And mommy's life, um, single mommy life is a very <laughs> um, interesting, jam-packed life. <laughs> We have so many different avenues that, you know, we struggle with, like financial and, and love and 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 being parenting, the person. Yeah, yeah, parenting, teacher, it. nurse, all that stuff. So so connect with us because we want to connect with you. Yeah. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Julie on the mic. And you can find me on I have three different handles. Instagram, which is my favorite. I'm always on there at Jasenia Grams. You can find me on Twitter at Jasenia Tweets and on Facebook at Jasenia Book. Hello, surprise. <laughs> and you can follow Splitting Upward at Splitting Upward on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you have any questions, hashtag Ask Splitting Upward, or you can DM us and we will figure out how to get your questions on the air with whoever exciting yes. guest we might have. Yeah. Go to mom.com. We got parenting tips, stories, all kinds of stuff that you need for parenting. And you can subscribe to Splitting Upward anywhere you get a podcast. Everywhere. And we will see you here. Same bat channel. Same bat show. <laughs> the bat shit crazy show. <laughs> nah. Shit crazy. Nah. 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 Son. nah. No. We called. We're here for you. And I'm here for you. Oh, oh my God. My life. All right. You are <laughs> listening to Splitting, Splitting Upward. Upward. <laughs>